You come back the next day and those bacteria are waiting for your sebaceous glands. They're waiting. They're like, oh, look at all this fresh sebum that we can grow in and multiply in. Vigorous Steve here with the most comprehensive guide to acne management you'll find anywhere on the internet. So that means it's going to be long and very lengthy. That's why there's timestamps down below in the description section so you can skip ahead to the section that you're interested in. And you might have to watch this video multiple times to really get through it because there's a lot to talk about, a lot of advice that I want to transfer to you so you can manage your acne properly, get it under control or mitigate it completely for the rest of your life, which is going to involve Accutane, which is a horrible drug and medication that it should be considered as a last resort. So we'll discuss that last. Again, that's what the timestamps are there for. So feel free to skip ahead if that's the only thing that you're interested in because you've tried pretty much everything else already. Before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Let's briefly discuss what acne is and why it's so problematic for bodybuilders to take performance enhancing drugs because it seems to exacerbate the whole situation. So you might have a little pimple here and there before you start dabbling with the PEDs or dive headfirst into your bodybuilding journey. And then when you get really, really serious or you get to an advanced level, right, you get all this uh, additional acne that you didn't really ask for, but somehow is magically appearing worse and worse and worse to the point you really have to question if you want to continue with this bodybuilding journey at all. Acne, also known as acne vulgaris, is caused by clogged sebaceous glands. Your sebaceous glands produce a lot of sebum to help lubricate and insulate the skin from infections or mold or anything else that can take hold and cause an infection. Sebum has a little bit of an antimicrobial properties, but when a sebaceous gland or hair follicle gets clogged with dead skin cells which are constantly being turned over, this sebum builds up and causes a pimple resulting in inflammation around it. So when you see a whitehead, that's the sebum behind this clogged gland that is getting more and more and more over time because the dead skin cells prevent the sebum from getting out of the gland. And then this redness around it is the actual inflammation. Now this is a normal pimple which you can pop and then go about your business. But this pimple can progress into cystic acne due to bacterial overgrowth. And even though sebum has some antimicrobial properties, once bacteria get in, they feed on the sebum and multiply rapidly, causing even more inflammation around the tissue, thickening the skin, turning into cystic acne, which looks even worse cosmetically. So this is something you have to keep in mind. That not only does acne get caused by clogged pores or sebaceous glands, there are also bacteria out there which worsen the condition, resulting in full-blown facial lesions and permanent scarring. Keep in mind that acne affects millions of people worldwide, not just people that take performance enhancing drugs and go through this roller coaster of hormonal imbalances. Now, acne can occur in anybody regardless of age or sex or ethnicity or climate of residence. And acne also occurs in some of the domesticated animals like cats, dogs or horses. So there is something to say for calling acne a lifestyle disease, similar to how diabetes is a lifestyle disease due to inactivity and poor dietary choices. Acne can be considered a lifestyle disease because domesticated animals and humans spend a large portion of their time inside. So I'll address all of these issues in this video because some of that is hygiene related and lack of sun exposure related because acne is not something you commonly see in wild animals, not even at the zoo where animals spend a large portion of their time outside even though they're still in an enclosure. Now there's typical features of acne, including blackheads, whiteheads, pimples, oily skin, and of course scarring due to cystic acne. So those all fall within the group that we call acne or acne vulgaris. Acne is very common on the face or the scalp, on the chest, the shoulders, or the back. And in cases of bodybuilders that don't control their estradiol levels well, or go through a roller coaster of hormonal fluctuations, we have a special term for them, it's called bacne, and it's not very common in general population, but predominantly in bodybuilders who take performance enhancing drugs, something like a D-anabol kickstart, for example, or a high test high nandrolone cycle. Those guys generally end up with bacne, 
which is cystic acne, but on the back. So it might not be that bad on the face or the chest, but when you turn around, it literally looks like the moon. Hopefully you've got an impressive lat spread to match to make it really look like the moon, but it's something that's really horrible and takes a lot of micromanagement to really resolve. You might still see permanent scarring from terrible back knee that um, right, doesn't really seem to go away even when you get tremendously lean. So you see that on some of the competitive bodybuilders when they do their back double biceps or lat spread, if you look at the high definition pictures, you see a lot of craters and scars and, and lumps and bumps and whatever else because they had terrible back knee in the past. So this video hopefully can teach you something on how to avoid that from happening. In case you haven't dabbled with the anabol or high dose nandrolone cycle, but are still thinking about running these compounds in the future, hopefully this video can persuade you from doing that. And otherwise you at least have the information to prevent back knee from manifesting. In many cases, actually in 80% of the cases, acne, wherever that may be, on the face, the shoulders, the chest, or the back, is caused by hormonal imbalance. And when you go on performance enhancing drugs, the testosterone base, and perhaps other anabolic androgenic steroids on top, you are creating a hormonal imbalance. Now, if you're susceptible to acne before you start taking performance enhancing drugs, it might be best to microdose exogenous testosterone every day. So at least you get very stable serum concentrations, preventing tremendous hormonal fluctuations. Because again, you're downregulating your HPTA, endogenous testosterone production and estradiol production is uh, going to be non-existent. DHEA and pregnenolone production is perhaps going to be cut in half or one third, unless you're using ACG or supplementing with DHEA and pregnenolone to sustain levels of these neurosteroids sufficiently. Because again, when you're going on exogenous testosterone and perhaps a dihydrotestosterone derivative or a progestogenic 19-nor derivative, nandrolone, trembolone, mint, right? everything gets out of whack. And this is where acne thrives. So the key here is to ensure that your hormones don't fluctuate badly with either daily micro-administrations or simply not going on this super high dose right off the start. And when you increase the dose, you only increase it a little bit. You don't double it unless you're going from, let's say, hormone replacement therapy for bodybuilders, a generous dose of 250 milligrams testosterone inotate per week, for example. And then you go from this cruise dose or TRT, TRT plus dose to a cycle of 500 milligrams testosterone inotate per week. Right? That's doubling the dose. But in many cases, you can also go from 250 test to 375. Make as much results as you can and then increase to 500 and then go to 700, right? Small steps to prevent tremendous hormonal fluctuations. And when you add in other compounds, again, you don't do this with the lowest effective dose. You don't go on the highest possible dose that you ended your last off season or your last contest prep or cutting phase with. You add in a compound and slowly increase it over time merely to prevent acne from getting very, very bad. Now, will this mitigate it completely? Of course, not entirely, but it prevents it from getting worse. And you'll see that with a lot of guys that go on steroids or start their cycle from uh, endogenous testosterone production, within the first four to six weeks, they get horrible acne. And even though the dose doesn't really change and the injection frequency doesn't really change with prolonged use and staying consistent with this protocol, the acne slowly goes away or gets a lot less because it's this hormonal fluctuation coming from endogenous testosterone to super physiological. And the same can be said for estrogen, right? You have endogenous estradiol and esterone and estriol levels to super physiological estradiol or out of the reference range estradiol levels. And meanwhile, your estriol and estriol levels kind of crash. So you can use a supplement like dianol methane, for example, to help metabolize this excess estradiol into estriol and esterone. And again, look into DHEA and pregnenolone supplementation or ACG to kind of balance everything out. Because in this balance, you're preventing acne from getting terribly bad. And if you're purposely creating a hormonal imbalance by throwing the kitchen sink at it, well, acne is very, very pleased with that. And now the acne is growing in places it has never grown before, resulting in anxiety, or reduced self-esteem or depression because now you are perceiving a lot of imperfections on your skin with all of this acne 
We might even get bullied, right? Some people really don't like how acne looks on particular people. And well, I will be honest about it myself. Whenever I see a bodybuilder covered in acne, because that certainly doesn't have to be the case at all. And honestly, a bodybuilder with horrible skin kind of brings the entire fitness industry down as a whole, or at least in the eyes of the general population. And I honestly feel a bit embarrassed every time I see a bodybuilder with horrible skin because they don't take care of themselves. And it looks unhealthy. It looks very unhealthy. And the compound selection and the dietary choices certainly play into that. And it's always something that I prouded myself on for having nice skin the majority of the year. Of course, you have a pimple here and there, but if I don't manage my acne properly, I have horrible acne also, right? It's just something within my genetics. So everything that I've learned over the last couple of years, I'll discuss in this video so you can prevent it to the best of your abilities to the point you might get one pimple per week. So that's not 100% resolved. It might be 99% resolved. If you really want to resolve the acne 100%, you need to take quite drastic measures in the form of Accutane mega dosing, which we'll discuss at the end of this video, which it's not something I recommend, but in some cases it is required to get the acne under control. So in my case, I'm able to control my acne 99%, which I'm happy with. It's not 100%, but again, one pimple per week is something I can accept. So I had to pop one this morning and not too bad, not the end of the world. Certainly not as bad as it used to be when I didn't put all of these things in place to control my acne. And then the second thing we can look into is our diet. It's always the diet, right? But look at it this way. Diet is providing building blocks for processes or muscle tissue, but it also provides building blocks for sebaceous glands and pimple formation. So if you don't want these pimples to form or turn into cystic acne, we have to avoid certain foods, which seems to exacerbate acne like dairy products, for example. So that means you're taking the butter and the cheese and the milk and even the whey protein out. And of course, the chocolates or everything else that's processed containing dairy products. So if you're thinking about having bread, for example, well, croissants and non-bread and a lot of other breads that are generally not real, real breads, but found in the candy aisle. So that's highly processed bread containing some dairy products, whether that's butter or milk or both, or milk powder, for example. Right here in Thailand, the bread is horrible, guys. I really hope you don't have that issue in the Western world. You just have to deal with gluten. So you stick with sourdough bread instead. But really, many of the breads out there are kind of horrible quality. So unless it's sourdough bread, I would just generally avoid it because you don't really know what's contained within, right? If you want to go unprocessed, you go with oats. Right? Those don't have any issues regarding acne formation. So a lot of foods you can avoid, especially the dairy products. And if you want to have whey protein, go with hydrolyzed whey protein. It doesn't contain lactose because it seems to be that lactose is the main root cause of a lot of this acne overgrowth. So you might still have acne when you're removing all of the dairy products from your diet. But the size of the pimples and the amount of pimples that you have will be severely diminished. So I removed dairy products from my diet years ago, and it basically cut the amount of pimples that I had and the acne that I had in half or down to a third. So that was a huge relief. Now, I might still have some cheese or chocolate or ice cream in the weekends, and that can still cause acne the following week or even the week after. I don't know why that is, it's the lactose being built up in the body somewhere or some of the metabolites of the lactose turning into literally turning into pimple foods. So you might get pimple forming for two weeks after you've had a four cheese pizza, for example. You're like, man, I can't believe I'm, I'm getting all these pimples weeks after eating this single four cheese pizza. But that's how bad it can be. And if you're suffering from bad acne, it's just best to avoid dairy products altogether with the exclusion of hydrolyzed whey protein or a probiotic yogurt containing lactobacillus cultures, which help to break down lactose in the intestinal tract and already pre-digest the lactose as it's sitting in the shelf. So from probiotic yogurt, for example, which I have daily, I get no acne. I add one scoop of conventional whey protein, acne. I have a little bit of cheese in the weekends, a couple more pimples, right? So it all compounds. So I would advise everybody just to avoid dairy products altogether 
besides the probiotic yogurt and the hydrolyzed whey protein. And again, look into collagen protein or gelatin protein instead if you want to have a shake post-workout or pre-workout. And if you want, you can flavor your shake with some of the low-calorie flavor drops that are out there or half a scoop of hydrolyzed whey protein. Or a pre-workout, which is what I do. I mean, Gorilla Mode Nitric has a ton of different nice flavors. But when I combine Gorilla Mode Nitric Mango Peach or Lemon Lime with collagen protein, it's actually quite palatable. Another thing you should avoid are the omega-6 rich foods, whether those are vegetable oils or processed foods. Omega-6s seem to cause a lot of acne in particular individuals, not for everybody, but it's this ratio between omega-3 and omega-6 when you skew that disproportionately and exacerbates the inflammation around a clogged sebaceous gland. Flaxseed oil, which is very high in omega-3, also causes a very oily skin in some individuals. So that might be a nut oil that you want to exclude from your diet if that's currently in your diet, because some people get acne from that as well, even though it's very high in omega-3s and not so much in omega-6s. You want to avoid the vegetable oils, maybe reduce the amount of seeds and nuts that you're having in your diet, which are generally uh, rich in omega-6s as well. You'll still get a lot of micronutrients from nuts and seeds, so you don't have to remove them completely, but you might want to get your fats somewhere else from avocado, for example, or salmon or another fatty fish. Peanuts or peanut butter, I would generally avoid, especially processed peanut butter containing palm oil as an emulsifier, turning that peanut butter nice and creamy. Again, it's also pimple food, so I would generally avoid it unless you're using peanut butter for one day leading into a bodybuilding competition as a fat load, which generally works quite well. In all other cases, most of the omega-6s you generally avoid to minimize the amount of pimples that could possibly form. I feel that MCT oil is generally okay. I feel that olive oil is generally okay or macadamia nut oil. Those don't seem to cause pimples in most people that consume it frequently. But again, you have to go through a little bit of an elimination diet to see which of the oils or omega-6s are generally well tolerated regarding the formation of acne. And then you figure out a little bit of a short list of the foods you can eat and the foods you can't eat. And it will certainly help to keep your acne under control. The golden tip I can give you guys is keeping your omega-3 to 6 ratio at 2 to 1. So you consume twice the amount of omega-3s that you're consuming omega-6s. So that means your diet is going to have to be consisting of salmon or chia seeds or fish oil with each meal. A lot of healthy foods that contain a high amount of omega-3s and then you minimize the omega-6s to the lowest amounts you can following this guideline of a 2 to 1 ratio. But you still get the micronutrients which are beneficial from nuts and seeds. So if you want some extra selenium, for example, you have one or two Brazil nuts per day. Okay, you increase your omega-6 content of your diet as a whole, but you're not risking the exacerbation of the pimples and acne that you have going on currently. And so diet and management is a whole subject in itself, but these are a couple of guidelines that you can follow to prevent acne from getting worse and keeping it at bay. Again, minimize the amount of processed foods that you're consuming, cereal, white breads, sodas, condiments, everything with processed carbs, just take it out. Consider just moving everything to supposedly clean, unprocessed food sources, sweet potato, rice, steel cut oats or rolled oats, quinoa, fruits, all of those are unprocessed and don't exacerbate or cause acne. And again, avoid any bread containing gluten or milk, right? So that's no croissants, pancakes or non bread or candy bread. Just stick with sourdough bread that doesn't cause acne in myself and most of the people that do their carb up with sourdough bread in the weekend. All of the fast foods you should avoid because you don't have any control of what they put inside the, the burger or the bun or the pizza or whatever else, right? Go eat at a restaurant where they put a little bit more love and care into the preparation of a cheat meal. No fast food. Just go to a restaurant, spend the extra money because otherwise you'll be popping pimples for the entire two weeks afterwards and you'll probably end up spending way more money on all of the 
right, topical creams that you need to um, incorporate to reduce the inflammation and make yourself somewhat appealing again. You can do a food intolerance test and figure out which food allergies or sensitivities that you might have. I already mentioned that in a previous video, so I'll link that at the end of this video so you can give that a watch when we're done here. Micronutrient deficiencies, a very common cause for acne. It's very common for people who don't pay special attention to their diets, besides the dairy products and the processed foods, to not get ad adequate micronutrients in for overall skin health. Most notably, vitamin E, selenium, vitamin A, omega-3, collagen type 1 and 3, right? We already discussed most of this previously, but also zinc. Zinc is a very potent mineral that you can take in supplemental form, zinc picolinate or bisglycinate. 25 milligrams on an empty stomach once or twice per day is in most cases already sufficient to mitigate some of the acne and improve skin health. And again, a lot of the bodybuilders that don't supplement zinc, they actually get into a zinc deficiency because dietary zinc is poorly absorbed. And if you're eating, even if you're eating a lot of beef, your zinc might still deplete when you're taking anabolic androgenic steroids because gene transcription, when you're taking PEDs, speeds up, right? We're, we're trying to build as much muscle tissue as possible and we're flooding the androgen receptor with androgens resulting in gene transcription, which depletes zinc and selenium. So by definition, when you take anabolic steroids or other performance enhancing drugs, you need to supplement a little bit of zinc in. Now, in most cases, you don't really get into a selenium deficiency as long as you're eating plenty of animal meat-based sources because they already contain a decent amount of selenium. And most people would get 300 micrograms, 400, sometimes even 500 micrograms of selenium from their diet alone. So if you eat a lot of fish, a lot of beef, a lot of eggs, a lot of chicken, or one serving of each, you get plenty of selenium already. It's generally not needed to supplement but it might still be advised to add in 100 micrograms or even 200 micrograms of selenium to help with skin health and prevent acne from getting worse. That it's 25 milligrams zinc picolinate once or twice per day and perhaps 100 micrograms of selenium once or twice per day. Give that some thought. Again, the omega-3s can come from food or fish oil, which also mentioned in many videos. I prefer to have a serving of 500 to 800 milligrams EPA and DHA from fish oil with each meal. The collagen type 1 and 3 you can get from hydrolyzed bovine skin in the form of a supplement to spike your pre-workout or post-workout shake with. And I've been taking this for years and it really helps with overall skin texture, quality, reduce acne a little bit, connective tissue health, and then of course muscle uh, growth because, well, a large portion of your body is actually made up of collagen in several different types. And supplementing with type 1 and 3, which is predominantly found in the skin, really helps with skin texture and quality, including reducing the acne to a certain extent. The vitamin E, I would recommend everybody to get in supplemental form as well, because you can't really get enough vitamin E for this purpose from your diet. You want a mixed vitamin E containing the eight different fat-soluble compounds, four tocopherols and four tocotrienols, to help with antioxidant status in the skin. Now, of course, vitamin E acts as an antioxidant for the cell membrane in all tissues of the body. But in this case, maybe 200, 400 IOs of a mixed vitamin E should be sufficient to prevent acne from getting worse. And again, the effects are just going to be moderate, similar to the effects of zinc, selenium, and collagen type 1 and 3. But all of these compound preventing micronutrient deficiencies, making the acne a lot less severe. What will help very, very well is vitamin A, specifically retinol, coming from animal meat sources. So we're not talking about beta carotene found in carrots or sweet potato. If you eat a ton of sweet potato, it will not do anything for your acne in a positive sense. So I've seen it on people that follow a sweet potato only diet because it's so voluminous while they're prepping for a bodybuilding competition. So they might have a kilo of sweet potato per day giving you a couple hundred grams of carbs, it's not that much. And you would expect um, from this uh, very high amount of vitamin A to have um, a positive effect on your acne, but that only seems to color the skin orange. Doesn't do anything for acne, not something I would recommend. If you want to keep your acne at bay or keep it under control simply with dietary choices and covering these micronutrients, look into beef liver. 
Right? You can mix that with your general beef patty and turn that into a little bit of a special hamburger if you want. 30 to 40 grams of beef liver per day in combination with the eggs that you're eating or the salmon or maybe cod liver oil, which is also high in vitamin A, in combination with all of that already brings you to the top of the upper tolerable limit for vitamin A, right? That's 10,000 IUs per day. You can consume maybe 60 to 80 grams of beef liver if that's your sole source of vitamin A being the retinol. In that case, you also bring yourself up to the upper tolerable limit of 10,000 IUs retinol per day. And you certainly don't want to go over that because it will really dry out the skin. I mean, keep in mind that tretinoin or isotretinoin being Accutane is based on vitamin A. So if you don't have access to that, if your country only provides that on prescription, the first real thing you can look into, something I tried myself in the past, is beef liver containing a very high amount of vitamin A. And it's a very potent first line of defense to get your acne under control. But there's a little bit of a caveat. Again, hypervitaminosis A or vitamin A retinal toxicity occurs beyond 10,000 IUs or 3,000 micrograms per day. So you want to keep your daily intake of dietary vitamin A being retinol from animal meat sources below this because vitamin A stores in the liver. And again, over time, it might cause some liver toxicity as well. So you don't want to expose yourself to too much vitamin A. I would advise everybody to slowly build up their beef liver or uh, cod liver oil or other sources of vitamin A over time. Maybe you go with 5,000 IUs of vitamin A for a month. See how that keeps your acne at bay and dries out your skin. And the first time I incorporated so much beef liver into my diet, it was winter, which already gives me dry skin. And then, of course, you're meal prepping and you're going outside and you're going to the gym and you're exposed to this cold climate and you're washing your hands all the time. Really, my knuckles started to flake. That's how dry my skin was. Of course, my acne on the face and the back was completely under control. Maybe I had a pimple once every two weeks or so, again, because I was avoiding dairy products and everything else that might cause acne. But my hands got so dry unbelievably dry to the point I had to use lotion, which is uh, something men don't really want to um, admit to, right? So it's something you can look into, but it comes with a caveat. Please do additional research because hypervitaminosis A is a real thing and that can result in vision changes or swelling of the bones and extremely dry and rough skin or mouth ulcers or confusion, right? Uh, eczema even. There's a lot of things that you need to be aware of before you start to um, right, really go into the vitamin A or tretonian or esotretonian routes. But beef liver is probably the least severe out of these three options. All right, let's move over to hygiene and then discuss a couple supplements which are highly beneficial to combat acne. Hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. I can't emphasize it enough. A lot of people worsen their acne with poor hygiene practices. First thing you need to do is when you come home from the gym is you get your ass into the shower. When you're sweating a lot and a lot of the sweat and sebum and dead skin cells start to mix, they're going to clog your pores the longer you keep it on your skin. So the first thing you want to do when you get home is take a shower and wash the sweat and the sebum and the dead skin cells away. Scrub. Scrub while you're at it, especially if you have terrible back knee, scrub that shit away. Get a loofah on a stick and scrub it, right? Or you ask your girlfriend or wife to do it or your boyfriend, whatever. Ask somebody else to do it, right? Using an exfoliator, scrub that shit off. Don't keep your gym clothes on. Don't sit there in your own sweat for an hour or 30 minutes or 10 minutes even. As soon as you get home, ideally at the gym, you change your clothes, remove the sweaty gym clothes that you just had on that it was accumulating bacteria coming from the gym from other people that might transfer their bacteria to you. Ooh, cooties, right? Take your gym clothes off, especially if they've been soaked in sweat, then take a shower. Just get rid of all this gunk and goo and whatever else that you accumulated at the gym and accumulated on your clothes because that will be turning into acne and come back with a vengeance the longer you leave it on. Don't go to bed without a shower after going to the gym. I hear people do this sometimes during consultations. And like, dude, what are you doing? 
You know, it, here in Thailand, we shower like three times, four times per day. You wake up, you take a shower. You do your fasted cardio, you take another shower. You have a shower in the afternoon because you're sweaty all day. And then you take another shower after the gym. And if you're going to the gym in the afternoon, you take a shower then. And then you shower before bed again. And that resolves a lot of acne because you're constantly washing all the sweat and sebum and dead skin cells away. And yes, it takes a lot of extra time. But hey, again, you're not spending this time mitigating your acne with all these fancy lotions that really aren't required. Change your pillowcase and your bed sheets, especially if you have very oily skin, if you're taking Prima Bolin or other DHT derivatives that produce a lot of sebum, right? And you're, and you're on a full-blown cycle or you're during the off-season where you're eating a ton of food and your fat intake is quite high and containing some of the omega-6s or dairy products or whatever else you should be avoiding, at least when you're changing your pillowcase and your bed sheets daily, daily, you don't allow bacteria to accumulate in the sebum that is coming off your face or your shoulders or your back or your chest. And you're laying on this pillowcase or your bed sheets for, what, six hours, eight hours? Maybe some guys lay there for 10 hours <laughs> during the off season trying to grow. All of this sebum is now going into your pillowcase and then the bacteria start to form there. Now you come back the next day and those bacteria are waiting for your sebaceous glands. They're waiting, they're like, ooh, look at all this fresh sebum that we can grow in and multiply in. That's how you get acne. So just if you're suffering from bad acne, especially cystic acne, change those pillow seats daily. It's a lot of laundry, yes, I'm well aware of that, but that's still better than the alternative being Accutane. Wash your laundry, whether that's the bed sheets or your workout clothes or anything else that you wash, and yes, it will destroy your clothes, but wash it at 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit, because those are the temperatures where bacteria generally die. Look into pasteurization of foods. When they pasteurize milk or egg whites, they pasteurize that at about 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This kills off all the bacteria contained within, which could otherwise ruin the shelf life. So you can do the same for your clothes. You wash it at a little bit higher temperature. Yes, those clothes will shrink and turn a little bit hard and tough, especially if you're wearing 100% cotton, which I don't have, this is way too hot for Thailand. But if you wash it at this temperature, yes, your clothes will suffer and you might have to iron it afterwards, but at least all the bacteria will be dead. So you don't have risk of recontaminating yourself with bacteria if you're washing your laundry in 30 degrees or 40 degrees, which is certainly a lot more friendly for your clothes, but also very friendly for the bacteria. And now they still kind of float around and accumulate and you don't really get your clothes clean. So again, wash it at a higher temperature, including the towels that you bring to the gym and constantly wiping the sweat away because you don't want the bacteria to accumulate in a towel, I'm sure. Some of you guys that reuse your towel for showering will notice that after two or three days, this towel starts to get a little bit smelly. Those are the bacteria feeding on your dead skin cells and the sebum. So wash those towels, 60 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and that, swell, that smell will go away. Of course, within two or three days of continuous use, you get the same thing. And again, if you're suffering from bad acne, you want to switch your towel frequently, ideally daily or single use as well. So you might get a smaller towel because, well, that's a fuckload of laundry that you now have to do to prevent this bacteria from transferring all over the house and through your clothes and your towels and your pillowcase. It's a lot of laundry, but again, the more hygienic you are, the less likelihood you have for these bacteria to migrate, exacerbating the pimples, turning them cystic. What you should also avoid generally are lotions, potions, makeup, exfoliations, whatever. Anything you put in your skin that stays there can exacerbate acne. Again, acne forms from the inside. And if you want to mitigate acne, you have to address that from the inside as well by making good dietary choices and keeping your hormones stable and making sure you're not in a micronutrient deficient state. All these things you need to manage for internal health. And then you don't want to make it worse with something topical that's going to mess with the pH balance of your skin, turning it too acidic or too basic or just drying it out 
too much because all of that will increase the bomb production because now your body is actively, actively trying to make a defense mechanism, making your skin a lot more oily. So a lot of these topicals you should just generally avoid unless it's something like aftershave, for example, that I feel that's generally well accepted and well tolerated for people who are acne prone. And yes, you can use an exfoliator on your back to mitigate acne, but again, wash that all away. Don't let any of the residue sit. I really hope this helps. Thank you guys so much for watching. The eBooks, you know where to find them. You know where to find me for the consultations. Follow me on Instagram at Vigor Steve and on TikTok as well. Have a look at my link tree. If you're looking for the supplements that I discussed in this video, I'm sure there's a link for it with a discount code so you can save yourself some money in the process and resolve your acne as cheaply as possible. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep that is acne free for you guys. Again, I had a pimple or two here or there. It's not completely resolved, but it's certainly manageable. And well, I'm married, so I'm off the market. So who cares? Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh, have a look at some of these other videos which are related and might be highly beneficial and informative for you as well.